Hello and welcome to Lord of the Smart Rings channel. I spent the night in a sleep lab to test how accurately smart rings measure or estimate sleep compared to the polysomnography, PSG, the gold standard for sleep tracking. I brought all my precious Aura 3, Aura Generation 4, Ultra Human Air, Samsung Galaxy Ring, Circular Slim, Circle, Ring of Generation 2 and EQR3 uh, as a clone. As a bonus, I also tested the Garmin Fenix 8 watch. I've already shortly covered this topic in the article on my website, where I analyzed total sleep phase duration. The key takeaway, Aura 4 and Samsung Galaxy Ring performed really well in estimating sleep duration. Total sleep in each sleep stage isn't enough. Even if the ring correctly estimates the duration of deep sleep, it might not pinpoint the exact time it actually occurred. So, in this video you will learn how a sleep lab test actually works, what is my experience, uh, also how sleep phases are actually determined in sleep lab and uh, for the ring platforms, how to export sleep data from smart rings, how smart rings perform in two-phase sleep versus wake uh, and four-phase model and which device was the most accurate for my test case. You can jump to a specific chapter for quick info but for the full picture I would recommend watching the entire video. So let's get started! If you suspect you have sleep issues, your doctor can refer you to a sleep lab test. After booking an appointment, you will arrive in the evening where a technician will attach various sensors to your body. These monitor your brain waves, your eye movements, muscle activity, heart rate and breathing through the night. The process of attaching all these sensors isn't exactly pleasant, it takes time and you will feel a bit like a cyborg. Sleeping with wires, straps and electrodes isn't comfortable, especially if you move around a lot at night. And then comes the best part, removing all the sensors in the morning. Some peel off easily, while others give you a free partial depilation, which is included in the price. After that, you can shower to remove the conductive gel and sit down with a specialist to review your results. How are sleep phases determined? Most smart devices divide sleep into four main phases. Wake, light, deep uh, and REM. But how does a sleep lab actually determine uh, these phases? A sleep lab uses polysomnography or PSG, which monitors multiple physiological signals. EEG for the brain activity. Then there is the EOG for the eye movement. EMG for the muscle tension, I think this is the electrodes for example on your legs. Then you have the ECG for the uh, heart activity. Uh, then a trained sleep specialist manually, after the sleep night, manually evaluates these signals in 30 second intervals to classify sleep stages. The most important factor is EEG since sleep phases are primarily distinguished by brain wave frequencies. Different specialists might interpret sleep data slightly differently, so there is always some level of subjectivity. So how do smart rings and watches measure sleep? Wearable devices don't have the EEG sensor usually, so they rely on different data sources, uh, which is mainly heart rate variability or HRV, which means changes in heart rate through the night, and also the body movement from the accelerometer, also the uh, heart rate itself, and using machine learning algorithm these devices estimate sleep phases based on uh, indirect measurements, I would say, meaning that they approximate PSG but can't fully match it, of course. Now you can probably understand why I say that 
smart drinks basically guess sleep phases. I want to thank the sleep lab which prefers to stay anonymous for providing me the reference PSG data. But extracting the data from smart drinks was a challenge. Some apps offer detailed exports while others make it nearly impossible to access the raw data. Uh, here's how different brands handle data export. Aura and Alter Human they have excellent APIs so easy data export. Rincon exports data but not detailed enough so I had to manually read it from the app. Circular Slim and EQR3 no options at all manually reading from the application. Samsung uh, required exporting via sleep as Android as a workaround and then manually reading. Terrible experience. And that's it. Okay, let's focus on comparing sleep detection accuracy and let's start with the simplest model, which is two-phase model. Sleep versus wake. The most basic method of sleep analysis divides the night into just two states, sleep and wakefulness or awake or wake phase. Here's why the two-phase model is important. Many platforms use total sleep duration which means total sleep minus wake phases for sleep scores and readiness metrics. Even small, even, even small detection error affect these scores. Now let's compare how different rings perform. Here's the graph comparing total sleep and wake duration across all devices. Sleep is in blue, wake time is in the orange color. The closer a device bars match PSG, the better. Aura and Samsung perform well in this regard. The second uh, graph illustrates the deviation of each device from the PSG reference value in percentage terms. Negative values indicate that the device underestimated the wake phase, detected fever awakenings that actually occurred, and positive values mean that the device overestimated the wake phase meaning detected more awakenings than there actually were. Let's dive into sleep phase accuracy. After analyzing sleep versus wakefulness, now uh, we shift to four phase sleep model, which distinguishes between deep sleep, the deepest stage essential for body regeneration and muscle growth, light sleep, a transitional phase stabilizing breathing and heart rate, REM sleep, uh, the dreaming phase, let's say, characterized by the high brain activity, crucial for memory and learning, and wakefulness, brief awakenings during the night, often unnoticed. Just like most smart ring applications, we will now analyze the night through the lens of hypnogram. A hypnogram is a graph that illustrates the prog progression of sleep stages through the night. Each sleep phase is represented on the y-axis, while time is plotted on the x-axis. By analyzing the hypnogram, we can visually compare how accurately different devices detected sleep stages in comparison to the PSG reference data. You can find this interactive uh, hypnogram on my website lordofthesmartrings.com. I recommend focusing on the period after 2 am. At the time, uh, I had a beer in the evening which made me need to use the bathroom and then I couldn't fall back asleep for a long time. This moment was well captured by Aura and Samsung which correctly identified the extended wake phase. And the fact that I took a few steps accelerometer was at least recorded by Alter Human and Garmin. One of the best ways to objectively evaluate measurement accuracy is the confusion matrix. How does the confusion metric work? Each row represents the actual sleep phase according to PSG, polysomnography as you know, and each column shows how the tested device classified that phase. If a device were perfectly aligned with the reference PSG, we would see 100% along the diagonal, meaning it always correctly assigned to the sleep phase. 
If this isn't clear, let's break it down using the example of with Ring on Generation 2. The agreement between Deep, PSG and Rincon is 66%. When Rincon classified a face as a deep sleep, it was actually light sleep in 25% of cases according to PSG. We can also verify these facts on the hypnogram. And here we have all confusion matrices, some key observations from my side. Rincon Generation 2 detected uh, deep sleep 66.7 correctly but often confused deep sleep with light sleep. Ultrahuman detected deep sleep well but overestimated deep sleep in the some light areas as well. Garmin Fenix 8 correctly detected deep sleep phases but slightly overestimated uh, initial deep sleep. Samsung Galaxy Ring was surprisingly, at least for me, a great even detecting a long vague phase after my bathroom uh, trip at 2, p uh, 2 am. An aura performed very well as well. Final verdict. Which smart ring is the best for sleep tracking? If we translate the findings from the confusion matrix into a single comprehensive graph, the results look like this. The horizontal axis represents uh, the, the average accuracy of sleep phase detection and the vertical axis shows um, the accuracy of the worst detected phase. The further up and to the right a device is, the better is performed. An ideal device would be as close as possible to the top right corner. And here's the final ranking based on accuracy. Aura 4, best for REM and deep sleep accuracy, minor wake detection issues. Samsung Galaxy Ring, great REM detection, slight overestimation of light sleep. Garmin Fenix 8, uh, <clears throat> pretty good deep sleep detection, some uh, confusion between REM and light sleep. Then there is uh, Ultra Human Air, decent light sleep detection, slight overestimation of deep sleep, but at least there is the part of wake around 2 am. Rincon, OK REM detection, often confused light and deep sleep. Circular Slim, occasionally detected deep sleep but struggled with REM and wake phases and EQR. Um, completely unreliable. Some final thoughts. I'm aware of the limitation of the test. It's based on just one night and one participant. However, my goal was to provide the most accurate comparison between smart rings and the gold standard PSG. Interestingly, sleep phase detection isn't my main focus when evaluating smart rings. I find heart rate, HRV and temperature tracking much more useful. In the future I plan to do long term testing using the EEG monitoring. Um, I also test more smart ring model, I mean from at least from the clone because EQR3 was complete fail. This is just the final no, this is just the first part of the bigger smart ring comparison series. Next up, I will test uh, step tracking accuracy. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe and check out the discount links below. Any comments are welcome and sleep well. See you next time.